On the night of December 10th, 2021, Doppler radar unveiled a beast hiding in the dark of night with radar velocities well over 200 miles per hour. A tornado at this intensity will destroy every single thing in its path. And that's exactly what happened. The town of Mayfield, Kentucky took a direct hit. Large industrial buildings would be reduced to piles of rubble, including a candle factory where eight would lose their lives. In Princeton, Kentucky, the tornado would leave cycloidal marks, a trait that is associated with the highest end tornadoes. Freeman, Kentucky was towards the end of the path. This was where some of the worst damage occurred. In the weeks following, survey crews would go over the damage and determine this tornado was EF4 strength with a maximum wind speed of 190 miles per hour. To fully understand this decision, we need to go back in time. In 1945, a 24-year-old Tatsuya Fujita would survey the damage left by the Nagasaki atomic blast. Fujita determined the bomb had detonated 520 meters above Nagasaki, and he was able to do this all from the patterns he observed in the debris. Years later in the United States, Fujita would continue to make brilliant observations. Ted would hypothesize that the swirling pattern observed in a tornado's path was due to smaller suction vortices that made up the tornado. And in 1971, Fujita would outline a new way to classify tornadoes. The more extreme the damage, the higher the tornado would be rated. It would only be three years until April 3rd, 1974, the first true test of the F scale. This tornado near Muncie, Indiana would have a nearly identical structure to what was hypothesized by Ted Fujita, proving his theory right. Another great example of multiple vortex structure within a tornado happened in Xenia, Ohio, the same day. This video was captured by a 16-year-old Bruce Boyd and is considered to be some of the most important tornado footage ever captured. In the weeks following, Fujita would lead the largest tornado damage survey ever completed. Because of how big this outbreak was, Fujita needed five different Cessnas to complete all the surveys. Fujita would log intensity ratings and width along each tornado's path. 148 tornadoes would touch down in 12 different states as well as Canada. This event still holds the record for the most tornadoes in 24 hours. It really blows my mind how good of a job Fujita did in 1974 without the use of satellite imagery. The Xenia, Ohio tornado was considered to be the strongest tornado, and it was even given a preliminary rating of F6, the first and last time that would ever happen. The Fujita scale would be active for the next 30 plus years and would be used to rate over 50,000 tornadoes. At the beginning of 2007, a new scale would be implemented, the Enhanced Fujita Scale, or the EF Scale for short. One big difference was that with the EF Scale, the higher end tornadoes had a slightly lower projected wind speed. In addition, the National Weather Service would outline 28 different DIs or damage indicators that would determine the rating of a tornado. Like the Fujita scale, the EF scale required damage to be done for a tornado to get rated. This damage right here was from a tornado that was rated EF2. At a glance, this might look worse than EF2. However, the building that collapsed was a garage. And if you follow the direction of the debris, it's clear the wind was perpendicular to the garage door, causing the garage to fail catastrophically. Because this tornado produced damage to a known DI, the National Weather Service was able to confidently rate this tornado. That's not always the case. Many tornadoes track over open fields and don't do any damage. 
Since its introduction in 2007, there have been nearly 10,000 EF0s, 6,300 EF1s, 1,600 EF2s, 403 EF3s, 85 EF4s, and only 9 EF5s. One out of every 2,500 tornadoes was EF5 strength in North America. That is an astronomically low number. I want to give my hot take. The EF scale in its current form is very outdated. Fully depending on damage to rate a tornado and determine its wind speed was a practice that was born out of necessity. Times have changed. We now have Doppler radar scanning a majority of the United States at all times. It is my belief that the maximum wind speeds within a tornado would be more accurately rated if the National Weather Service added a few more damage indicators and should also take into account Doppler radar, photogrammetry, and maybe even simulated environments. So, do I think these 10 tornadoes were the only tornadoes within the last 15 years to achieve winds higher than 200 miles per hour? Um, no. The most ridiculous example of the EF scale misrepresenting a tornado strength happened on May 31st, 2013, the infamous El Reno, Oklahoma tornado. Despite having radar indicated winds over 300 miles per hour, the worst damage this tornado would do was only EF3 damage. Because the damage is what determines the rating, the final rating of this tornado was EF3. The 2021 Western Kentucky Long Track Tornado is another candidate for tornadoes that probably should have been rated EF5. The worst damage produced by this tornado was near the town of Bremen, Kentucky, where multiple homes would be wiped clean off of their foundations. In the surveyor's notes, it stated that this home was well constructed, but the assigned wind speed was only 190 miles per hour. In my opinion, shredded debris left by the foundation that was swept clean is more than enough to justify an EF5 rating. On April 9th, 2015, this long track violent tornado would strike the towns of Rochelle and Fairdale, Illinois. This tornado would leave an extremely visible scar on the ground, similar to what was seen with the Western Kentucky tornado, except on a much larger scale. Videos captured by residents of the area showed how violent the winds were contained within this tornado. The National Weather Service would survey the damage and determine at 20 different spots the maximum wind speeds were 200 miles per hour. That is exactly one mile per hour less than the threshold required to achieve EF5 status. It seems unlikely that the tornado wasn't over 200 miles per hour at one of these 20 locations. I am not alone in my criticisms. In 2021, a paper released by well-respected scientists in the field states that supercell tornadoes are much stronger and wider than damage-based ratings indicate. Their data shows that over 20% of tornadoes have winds that are capable of causing catastrophic EF4 and EF5 damage. This is in stark contrast to the current rate assigned by the National Weather Service of less than half a percent. Their paper states that the NWS underestimates tornadoes by an average of 1.5 categories. Many might say that tornado ratings don't matter. That is not the case. Having an accurate representation of tornado wind intensities is important for tornado safety and building codes. Ted Fujita's method of using damage to determine a tornado's maximum wind speed has been the best method since his original usage in 1971. However, with the advent of modern technology, I think it's time to adopt additional techniques for this task.